A brief review of grade 10 trigonometry as a background to grade 11 trigonometry. There's the diagram upon which we base our trigonometric definitions. There are the definitions and there is the X-rated reminder. Shield your rear cause X-rays tan your exterior. Very useful for remembering. Also relates to the right angle triangle where R is the hypotenuse, X is the adjacent, and Y is the opposite. Notice the way when the angle we're dealing with is up there, the Y value is down here. Meaning that there are our trig ratio definitions by opposite adjacent hypotenuse. It's recommended that these are rather used because that's where it goes in grade 11 and 12. There, this is just practice to be able to get used to the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. For example, side of A, there are two triangles. There's the small triangle and the big triangle. Both are right angle triangles, meaning that sine of A is Y over R. So in this triangle here for A, CD is the Y. And the big triangle BC is the Y. And the small triangle AC is the R. And the big triangle AB is the R. In the second one, sine of B, well, in the, in the small triangle CD is the Y. And the big triangle AC is the Y. In the small BC is the hypotenuse. And in the big AB is the hypotenuse. Finding cos of A, well, that's just the X over the R, small, AD is the X, AC is the R, and in the big one, AC will be the X, and AB will be the R. Cos of B, X over R for B, well there's the X for B now. In the small triangle, uh, no, in the big triangle, BC is in the big triangle, and R is the AB, so BC over the AB and the big. And in the small triangle here, BD is the X and BC is the R. Tan of A. Small triangle. Opposite over adjacent. CD over AD. And the big triangle, opposite over adjacent, BC over AC. And tan of B in the small opposite over adjacent, CD over BD. And in the big one, opposite over adjacent, AC over BC. And you can try it in these ones as well. Sometimes they're up to three. For example, cos of T could be in this triangle. It could be in the bigger right angle triangle. Or it could be in the biggest right angle triangle. Something like Q1 is only in the small triangle. So try them yourself. Pause for a moment, try them, and then the answers will be put up. And the answers are... Here we are. Use of the calculator. Use of the calculator is very straightforward because it goes virtually as it's written. Sine of 30, so we enter sine 30 equals. Notice, make sure that it's on D on the screen, DRG modes. It's using DRG or mode, make sure it's on degrees. 3 tan 67.4, there it is, 3 tan 67.4 equals. Cos 12 over 3 cos 12 over 5. Well, 3 cos 12 divided by 5 equals, but it's better to use your fraction on the calculator because it's exactly the same as that. Same thing there. If you use the fraction, there we are. Exactly the same. Sine squared of 65. You're going to have to put sine of 65 in brackets and then square it. Because that's what sine squared means. It means sine of 65 all squared. 
Application solving triangles. If we have a look at the first one, calculate BC. So what we need to ask is, well, in terms of 28 degrees, what is that? X, Y, or R? And the 13.1, what is that? So we say, we need BC, Y, we have AC, which is R. So we say, well, we need BC, Y, we have AC, R. So they say, well, which trig ratio involves Y and R? Sine. So we say, sine of A equals BC over AC. There we are. We slot in the AC, we multiply up by the AC, and then we can put in the values, and there's our answer. To find AB, we need AB, X, so we need AB, that's the X, we have AC with the R. Which trig ratio represents X and R? Oh, cos. So therefore we'll write cos of A equals AB of AC. Multiply up by the AC, put in your values, and there's your answer. Find GH. Now you have to be careful with this one. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to say, well, for GH, that's the X, that's the R. GH is the R. GF is the X, so therefore we've got to use cos. So therefore we write cos of G is GFG over GH. Now our problem is that we're trying to find GH, so be careful. If I slot in the values, there it is there. So now I must multiply up by GH and then divide by cos of 69. And that gives me an answer. Right, solve for M and N. Now all that happens here is that I have two different triangles to work in and that N is in a triangle where I don't have enough information, either the little or the big one. But if I find M, I can get places. So I've got to find M first. So I say, well, for this angle here, M is the opposite, and BD is the adjacent. So I'm going to be using tan. There we are. M over BD equals tan 18.7. M over BD equals tan 18.7. Which means M equals BD multiplies up, and there's my answer for M. Now store that, full answer for later use. If you just store to one decimal place, any approximations will make it go more out. Now angle A, I'm going to find because I need to work in this triangle here. And that's 90, so what's left must be 90 in the big triangle, 90 minus. M over N equals opposite over hypotenuse of that angle, it's the y over the r, therefore sine of a. 2.1 m, we found it, n we don't know, and sine of 71.3 we found. Multiply up by n, divide by sine of 71.3, and we get 2.3. Finding angles. Let's have a look. If sine of point four five one equals theta, calc correct find theta correct to one decimal place. Right. To reverse is where it has those sine minus ones, cos minus one, and tan minus one above. So this is where we're going to use the shift key. There we are, the shift key up above. So if sine of 0.51, sine theta equals 0.51, then theta is sine to the minus 1 of 0.51. So we're going to press shift sine, shift sine, 0.451 equals, and we get our answer, 26,8 degrees. Here we are, shift sine, which is sine minus 1, 0.451 equals. But find theta, correct to one decimal place, some little practice here. Notice here, you've got to do shift cos, cos to the minus 1. Here you've got to do shift tan, tan to the minus 1. Here you've got to do shift sine, 
shift cos here you need tan on its own so you do have to divide by the two first here you need cos on its own the one must go first to that side then we divide by three then we use shift cos right there we are right tan minus one of that gives you 75 degrees sine minus one of seven ninths gives you 51 comma one cos minus one of 3.7 over 8.2 gives you 63.2 notice two goes out of deep and then tan minus one of a half they are tan theta equals a half if theta equals 26 degrees this one here we'll have to say 3 cos theta equals 1 which means cos theta is equal to 1 third now we can find the angle because cos minus 1 of 1 third finding angles find A now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, what's that, what's that? Well, that's the R. That for A is the Y, the opposite. So you say, what trig ratio involves Y and R? Sine. There we are. 11.2 is Y. 13.7 is R. Therefore, sine. So I'm going to write sine of A equals 11.2 over 13.7. And then we do as we did in the previous screen, we just say sine minus 1. Right, going back to definitions now. Often you're asked to find amounts without using a calculator. Tan of theta equals 4 over 3 between 0 and 90. That's actually told you something. That says y over x. So it's told you that y can be 4 and x can be 3. Now the first question says illustrate this in a sketch. So we need to draw our diagram in the first quadrant showing y is 4, x is 3. There we are, like that. And then we're going to put a diagram. There we are. That's quite natty. Let's do that again. There we are. x is 3, y is 4. There is our diagram. That's how we illustrate it. There's 4, there's 3. Use Pythagoras' theorem to find the value of r. Well, there's 4, there's 3. So r squared is x squared plus y squared, and we get r equal to 5. Finally, hence give the ratio sine theta cos theta. Well, sine theta is y over r. y over r. Cos theta is x over r. There we are, sine is y over r, 4 fifths, cos is x over r, 3 fifths.